life comes from a seed. Whether we're talking about human life, or animal life, or plant life, it all starts with a seed. Yes. Now bear this in mind, because this is really, really, this is really important. For the Word of God says, the eternal Word of God, the Word of God that is true, through the Holy Spirit ministering through Peter, he said, for you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring Word of God. 1 Peter 1.23 the Word of God is a seed, and all life comes from that seed. All right, now the next thing is, so we've gone from the seed to the root, because that's what happens. You plant the seed, it germinates, and it becomes a root. And from that root, well, then the next, you know, the next thing? It has, it has to go from, from root to fruit. At least leaf. No, no. Because it needs no, 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 no. No, that's not the command of the word. The word is that we go out and bear fruit. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. All right? So it's got to go from fruit, from root to fruit. So that's why John the Baptist said, therefore, bear fruit in keeping with repentance. It's not enough that you repent. Now you have to bear fruit in accordance with that repentance. This is the word of God. It's clear, it's simple, it's, it's true, logical. it's logical. So the message of repentance is the word of life. That's what that's what it said, first Peter, remember where I started, right? But think about what that message is. I'm not the Christ. And that word, by the way, in the Greek and in the and the Hebrew means anointed. You hear a lot of people talking about they are the anointed. Well the fact is God the Baptist said, hey. When, they, when people came to John the Baptist and said, who are you? He said, I'm not the Christ. He was not prepared to take anything from Jesus. For I have died and my life is hidden in Christ Jesus. That's supposed to be the attitude of the righteous that John the Baptist was sent to lead us into. And then he said, I'm not worthy. Humility. You are not going to have a relationship with God unless it is based on humility. And it starts with repentance, because repentance is the recognition of the fact that you're not the anointed, that you're not sinless, that you're not perfect. It, it, repentance is a confession of the fact you need help, because you can't save yourself. It is based on humility. And there's not an awful lot of teaching in the church today about humility. That seems to, to, to have gone in the 60s with the me generation. And then the simple fact is, and I'm sure you know this if you know Jesus Christ, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through him. That's the disciples. Now the simple fact is, this is what offends the world so badly. Because they don't mind you having Jesus as long as you recognize, well, there's other ways. You know, if I, you, okay, that's, that's good for you, but I do this. You know, I, I'm a nice person, I give... I, I send a check off to this charity. Every, you know what? Only through Jesus Christ. No man comes to the Father. It is, it is exclusive. If Jesus is not your Lord, and Jesus is not your Savior, you are not going into the kingdom of heaven. Period. So that repentance, in that case, is not turning all the way back to Jesus. If, if you don't turn it's, to it's Jesus. It's like right. Satan has come along and distracted you, and you're off into another path. Right. So... Okay, well, I really, what I'm trying to get to is the importance of repentance. Yes. Now, repentance only comes because of the Word. Right. If you close yourself off from the Word, you're not going to ever repent. You're not going to be willing to see yourself, okay, as you actually are. And you're not going to be able to see the gift of God in the fact that He is willing to transform you, to change you, to bring you from glory to glory, right? Yeah, so, yeah. So the work of the believer today is the ministry of reconciliation, proclaiming that repentance is available through the grace and mercy of God. Isn't that what Paul said? Now remember, Paul had said to the Corinthians that he had determined to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. But then he writes to the, later, and he says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, 
as though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 5.20 And the only way you can be reconciled to God is through the atoning work of Jesus Christ on that cross of Calvary. That's the only way. There's nothing that you can do. Not of works lest any man should boast. It is the free gift of God.